All right, guys, there's only three people today. Okay, well, four or uh, five. All right, so, uh, no, four. There's a fourth. Yeah, there's a fourth. What happened? <laughs> you know, I, I always hear, oh, yeah, senior design, senior design. Yes. Senior five. But, but what? Six. Six people now. Ah, cool. Yeah, seven. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Eight. All right. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So we'll, we'll keep going with our uh, CFD, and today we will run a simulation. Um, any questions before we get there? And did anybody have any trouble, or was everybody able to install and get to the point where we stopped last time? Okay, just like um, put um, what is it called reactions do a reactions if you got to the point where I stopped. A one. Two, three. Four. What was the question. The question is if you managed to get to the point where I stopped where I said now your CFT software is in installed just put in a reaction. I saw five hands already, six. Okay, all right. So most of you seem to have gotten there. Anybody still have any trouble? Okay, so um, let's see. Let me share my screen. And then, um, I'll tell you many, many things today, and most of them you should write down uh, somewhere in a notepad or uh, like copy paste it in a word program because you will use the same things over and over again. Okay. And uh, please stop me anytime you, you need me to do something again. All right. So let's open our um, Linux terminal again. And uh, have the stop bar. I need to it to go away. All right. Um, and type in cd. Cd is change directory. Cd dollar form underscore tutorials. And if you hit tab, it'll autocomplete. Okay, do that and hit enter. Okay, so this, um, the every, all the setup we did uh, last time, it created these nice variables like form underscore something that we can use as shortcuts. So uh, this is where your open form is installed. It's in a directory called OPT, open form eight. And we are looking at the tutorials directory. If you do LS list, it gives you everything that's in here. Okay. Now, all of these directories are different types of simulations. So there is uh, one type of simulation that uses incompressible assumptions, another uses multi-phase assumptions. So if we do LS incompressible, everything that's inside there will show up. So see now there's many different simulations within that type. We can run each of these individually. We want to go to, uh, I think is multi-phase, let me check. So multi-phase, where is it? Uh, Multi-phase interform? No. Okay, wait, I'm having trouble seeing this. Okay, okay, let me see. We go to multi-phase. Okay, and then we go to interform. Inter is 
related to interface. Since we have an air water interface, we will use this guy. All right. And then if I type in clear, all the stuff above will disappear. Clear, enter. All right. So now if you look at things in here, okay, there's LES, RAS, laminar, etc. We will go into RAS. And perfect. Okay, everybody here with me? Anybody left behind? Yeah, I'm left behind. I thought I had everything running fine, including the uh, foam, but when I put the commands in, you just said it doesn't do anything. Okay, anybody else have the same problem? Okay, so if you type in a simple foam help, what do you get? Just a second. My audio wasn't working, so I had to come back. What uh, do you think? My computer audio wasn't working, so I had to come back. Oh, okay. It says not found, but can be initialized with the uh, sudo app install open foam. Uh, okay, so when you do this, it says not found. Right. Okay, did you do the all the steps I mentioned in the video? Yeah, it installed everything, went through a long list of stuff, but it did end up at the very end uh, saying something like this. After doing about, you know, like 100 steps, it said, uh, failed to fetch HTTPS VersaWeb.dl SourceForge.net project foam foam Ubanto this blah 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 goes on undetermined error and um let's okay. say able to fetch okay. some archives maybe run and right. wait, wait 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 if can you do an ls these two in your terminal type ls these things the one i've highlighted okay so you want me to uh do echo? No, just type on, on your terminal, type ls and these exact words that I've highlighted. Ls, capital or small? Small, list, ls. Oh. Ls slash opt slash open foam eight. Anything? Well, just a second. Let me try it again because I capitalized the LS and it says uh, L. Hey, everybody else, if you have, uh, if you're already here, just hang on one minute. No, not yet. It says uh, cannot access op open foam eight, no such file or directory. Okay, so there was some problem with your install. Um, maybe you lost internet connection while downloading everything. So just try and install it again. Um, just the same steps we did last time. They should work fine. Uh, uh, and, and yeah, so um, well, I guess you can do that later. So right now, just watch what we're doing. Let the class here. All right. So, um, okay. Everybody else here at multi-phase interform RAS. Now, um, there's three main different simulations we can run. DTC hull, DTC hull moving, DTC hull wave. The one I showed you, um, uh, the one I sent you on Canvas was the DTC hull wave. Okay, so 
Um, the difference is DTC hull, you just have the a solid hull shape and you have flow going past it. There's no waves, nothing. DTC hull wave is where the hull can move um, in six with six degrees of freedom. And there is a wave, a head wave that's coming on. So let's run the DTC hull wave case. So the way you work with open foam is you, you have all of these nice pre-written tutorials. We copy one of these over to some other place and then we modify it according to our needs. So we will copy our DTC hull wave. So CP is copy, dash R is recursively. Any directory we copy has to have dash R, DTC hull wave. Okay, so we want to copy this folder in our home directory. So just do a tilde slash and it'll copy it in your home directory. Everybody good? Okay, then we go to our home directory. So just do CD, enter. If we do an LS here, you see we have our DTC hull wave that we just copied. Uh, forget about this open foam run. So yeah, I was doing something else. All right. So now we go into DTC hull wave and we'll look at what's inside there. Okay, everybody here with me? Who's not at this point yet? Tell me, tell me, tell me now. Okay, just again, uh, do a reactions. Who's here with me? One, two, three, four, five. Seven. Okay, perfect, perfect. So most of you are here. All right, perfect. So now I'll explain what each of these things are. The two main directories we care about are these two shown here, constant and system. Okay. These three things highlighted in green on my screen, they are just scripts. So we can open uh, these scripts and look at them. Um, if you're familiar with command line text editor, like BI, you can do this BI all clean and it opens the text file. Otherwise, if you don't uh, have, uh, if you don't know a command line script, we can open this location in our Windows uh, system. So just type in explorer.exe followed by a dot. Don't forget the dot. Okay, so type in this explorer.exe dot and hit enter. This is for Windows people. Uh, Mac, uh, sorry, I didn't try, so I didn't. I don't know what you would use. So see, now it's opened it for us in a nice Explorer window. Now we can open in all of these things with a text editor. So it is open with. Mm. Oh, open with is on top. So let's say open this thing with um, Notepad. Perfect. So you see now we have this guy in um, uh, we have this guy opened in Notepad and we can modify it, but don't change anything in here. The other two are also uh, similar scripts that do some some things. Okay, we we don't need to modify any of them yet. Okay, everybody's able to open this these files, the text files. 
Okay, if anybody has any trouble, you tell me. Don't hesitate. Okay, so now, these are scripts which we will use in a second, but we, uh, we don't need to modify them. Uh, what we do need to modify is in these two directories, constant and system. Let's look at um, constant first. So when we go into constant, there's many different things. There's a tri surface, et cetera, et cetera. We will mostly um, care about what's inside tri surface. And if you want to modify wave properties. So let me open this again with a text file, um, text editor. And you see here we have the origin of the wave, the direction the wave is moving in, the properties of the wave, what's its wavelength, what's its amplitude, etc. So you can change all of these things to look at different conditions that your ship might get exposed to. Okay. So remember this, this is constant slash wave properties is what you can modify to change your wave. Let's go into tri surface and look at what's in there. One second, one second. Oh, don't run out. Okay. When we go to tri surface, we will see there's just a readme file. Okay, so. It says, Order to house tri surfaces. What are tri surfaces? These are the CAD files that if you create using AutoCAD or Solid Edge, you would put them in this directory. Right now it says when we run the all run script, it'll copy some stuff in here. Okay. So um, let me show you what exactly it's going to copy. And you can follow along uh, with me. So just I'm going to copy this part, Foam Tutorials, Resources Geometry, and look at what's in there. So go back to my terminal. Okay. Wait one second, I'm starting to, okay, there's no feedback yet, right? No, there's no feedback. Okay, perfect. So I come back here and I ls whatever is in the that directory that the readme file said. Okay, there's okay, there's a bunch of stuff. Since we are working with DTC hull wave, that DTC scaled blah 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 is what we will use. So let's copy that over here just to look at it. What what's in there? manually. So we say copy that file, the DTC file. DTC is a Duisberg test case. So that's a very specific hull with this very specific wave conditions. So that's why it's called DTC. So let's copy that DTC scale thing. Um, let's say here. Okay, so copy path of the thing you want to copy and dot means here where I am. Let's do ls again. All right, so we have this DTC scale thing copied here. Okay, this is zipped at the moment. We will say unzip it. So the command is g unzip, um, gnu unzip, DTC scale, blah, blah, blah. Okay, just do that, hit enter. And we will do, we can look at it again. Okay, so look at this. We have this STL file. And STL files you might have seen before if you've worked with 3D printing. It's a stereo lithography file. So any STL file you can come up with, you can import into OpenFOAM and simulate flow around it, either completely immersed or with an interface. Completely immersed is easier to simulate. Interfaces are more difficult. So, but first we will do interface. Everybody has this DTC scaled STL now? Who doesn't have it? Tell me now. Uh, 
Okay, I'm having a hard time believing everybody has it. All right, I'll believe you. So let's go back to our Explorer and look at the, okay, you see this DTC scale.stl, that's the thing that we just copied and unzipped. Now we can open this in Paraview. Okay, let's say open. Oh, one thing, uh, Paraview doesn't know where to access these Ubuntu files. So we will just copy this somewhere. So let's um, copy to, okay, copy. I Well, let me just copy to my downloads folder. So I'll copy it there and now I know it's in my downloads folder. I can open it from there. So open. Go to downloads, where is downloads? Mm, not here. Downloads, yes, downloads, okay, there. And we can open DTC scaled STL. Okay, and we basically have our hull imported into View. Just the hull, no, no simulation yet. And if you uh, uh, the, don't like the blue color, just say solid color and it becomes white. If you don't like the white color, just go to um, edit color map, pick whatever you want, pink, becomes pink. So again, um, I'm going to call you out by name and you tell me if this works for you. Amadeo, does it work? It works. Chad? Okay, come back to Chad. Daniel? Okay, Chad works. So mine is having issues opening Paraview again. It worked yet the other day, but it's not working right now, but I am up to there and Paraview is opening now. Okay, okay. So, and other Daniel, Daniel Young? Uh, for some reason, I can't get TTC scaled open in Paraview. Oh, it doesn't open in Paraview? Um, no. Does it give you an error? No, it's just showing. I mean, it shows in the pipeline browser, but it's not displaying on the layout. Oh, uh, it shows in this pipeline browser, and then you hit apply. Oh, okay. okay, got it. Yeah, don't forget to hit apply. Anytime you import something, you have to hit apply. Declan? Yep, it's working. Griffin? I've got it. Roman? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Tobiah? Okay, Tobiah? Toby? Mm, okay. Zach? Yeah, I got it. All right, perfect. Sounds awesome. So, uh, okay. Um, so that's the hull shape that we will simulate flow around, okay? Now let's go back to our terminal. So um, we just did this to look at what the hull shape was, okay? We, we didn't need this thing here, so just remove it. RM is remove, TTC scale, STL. And now it's gone from our directory. Okay, so um, that was one thing we needed to look at in the constant directory. Let's go to the system directory now. So always remember, constant and system are the two places where we will uh, met, uh, where we will change things. So CD system, clear LS. All right, so there's a bunch of files in here. Um, let, uh, all of these are text files. So again, let me go to Explorer or you use VI here. VI, um, set fields, directory, dictionary, and 
you can open it here or in the explorer so where is my mm, okay i lost it so um, the only way to open the linux uh, directory in the uh, windows explorer is we do explorer dot exe dot okay so again it'll open a new one okay perfect so um All of these control how your simulation will proceed. Um, uh, let me, okay, um, block mesh. Um, okay, difficult for me to explain without showing you. Okay, leave, leave uh, block mesh alone. Come to decompose par dict. Decompose parallel directory dictionary is when you run the simulation, you can run in parallel on multiple different cores. All of you know what cores are, yes? Most of your laptops will have at least two cores, probably four cores, and unlikely more than that. So to figure out how many cores your computer has, go back to the terminal and type in htop, H-T-O-P. You see on the top, we have these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That says our compute, my computer has eight virtual cores, but this is hyper-threaded virtual cores. We only have four actual physical cores. So I will run the simulation using uh, four uh, of my cores. You're showing 12? Oh, nice. So you have six physical cores, good computer. All right. Uh, oh, also HTOP shows you other stuff. So how much memory you have. So I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and that's swap space. You don't want swap space being used. So this is nice. It's almost zero compared to how much is available. Okay. Um, so my computer has four physical cores. Uh, yours might have fewer or yours might have more. Okay. So let's remember how many our computer has. And then we can go to this guy, decompose parallel dictionary. I'll open it again in notepad. And here I have to change it to four. Okay. If your computer has six cores, you change it to six. If your computer has two cores, you change it to two. Of course you can put in whatever number you want, but it might, um, if you put too many, it, it might uh, slow down your simulation significantly. Once you make this change, you save it and close it. Okay, so that's the first thing I, I will change. Um, how many cores this thing can use. The next thing I will change is, I will come to this snappy hash mesh, mesh dict. So snappy hex mesh is what will create generate a mesh. So open this guy. And scroll down to the place where you have this maximum global cells. This, um, this says how many um, uh, how many cells are allowed in the simulation? Mm, two million is the number, which is a bit large for our laptop. So we comment it out. You comment by using these two forward slashes. Don't put anything else, otherwise it'll throw an error. So two forward slashes. That was the original number. Let's run with, um, let's run with 100,000. Okay, so this should at, at least give us something to look at. When you want a good simulation, these numbers should be high, but right now we're just learning how to run a simulation. So set it to uh, 100,000 and save and exit. Okay. So those are the two directories, uh, two files we have changed. Then the most important file is called the control dictionary. 
control dict. Let's open that guy and go to notepad and open it. Okay. What this thing does is it provides all the parameters that control the simulation. The simulation will start at zero, it'll end at 20 seconds, not 20 seconds our time, but 20 seconds of the ship uh, battling with the waves. Delta T is the time step size, and don't change that. Okay, come here and change the right interval. This says, um, when the simulation is running and the ship has encountered five seconds of flow, we will save one uh, file. So we can look at what happens. You know, we can visualize it. Let's make that um, 0 0.1, okay? Because we want to save many files right now so we can look at them. So make right interval 0 0.1 and make uh, the end time be one second. Okay, so we'll do a very short simulation and see what happens. And we will have 10, 10 like images we can look at, like playing a movie. Okay, uh, don't change anything else and then just save and exit. Okay, so now we are ready to run the simulation. Everybody here with me? Everybody has changed their decompose dictionary, snappy hex mesh dictionary, and control dict? I did. Okay, anybody uh, have any trouble? All right, so now we will, to run the simulation is very, very simple. Go back to the terminal, go to the main directory, which is the DTC hull wave. And um, I'm just making sure that the changes went through, they should be fine. Yeah, the changes went through. Right interval is 0 0.1, end time is one. Okay, perfect. So everybody ready? Just hit dot slash all run and hit enter. Okay, now your simulation is running. Um, so initially it's doing a bunch of things. It's running different programs. It's doing a you know, top, topo set is a topological set refinement, et cetera, et cetera. But again, we, we don't need to go into that much detail. Um, let's open another um, Linux window. So just go to this Ubuntu thing and right click and hit this again. Okay, so the simulation is running in that uh, terminal. If we close it, the simulation will stop. So we don't mess with that terminal, but we can open another terminal and we can check how things are going. So open a new terminal. And if you look at LS, again, we have our, um, the case that we are running, we just go CD in there. Less again. So you see it's creating all these log files. If you look at the log files, it's basically showing you what the, um, what the program has already done. So block mesh, it did some stuff. It created a mesh. Um, snappy hex mesh is running right now. So it's doing some stuff, okay? And um, we, we'll, we'll let it run for a sec, a uh, few minutes, and then uh, I'll tell you more. Everybody's code is running right now? You want to see how this is affecting your computer? Just type in htop in the new terminal, and you will see uh, my cores are being used heavily here now. That's what you want. You want to use as much of your computer as you can. Okay. So anybody have trouble? Everybody has this sort of screen right now? Who doesn't? Tell me now. You're very close if you don't.
Okay, seems like everybody has it running. Um, so since this is a complicated case, it takes a while to uh, get the meshing done and then actually start the simulation. Um, once it is, um, so once it, it goes to completion, then we'll look at the result, okay? Any questions up until now? So while these things are running, I'll switch to paper and pen. Okay, uh, any questions, anybody? Okay, let me ask again uh, individually. Uh, is this running for Chad? Hey, Chad, your hand is already up, so I don't know if it's running for you. Is it running for Amadeo? Yeah, it's all good. Daniel? All good. Daniel? Other Daniel? Yeah. Hey, yep. Hey, Griffin? Yep. All right, and then Roman? Yep. Toby? Zach? Yep. Okay, perfect, perfect, awesome. So uh, that's your first CFD simulation. So we'll, we'll let it run and then um, I'll, I'll continue with the example we started last time. Okay, so let me switch the screens. Oh, running good for you? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Okay, so let's do that and then. All right, so. Uh, today we'll finish talking about this free surface effect. Uh, so we had a container with a free surface. We said, all right, this can destabilize our hull. And we computed how much exactly, how much we lose the GM by, all right? And we said, okay, loss in GM is this value here. If I know everything on the right, I can compute how much stability is lost. And then we said, all right, one way to fix this issue is by dividing the tank. So we have the original tank shown in the solid line here. If we divide it, we manage to recover some stability. And then we have the question here. Uh, we have a barge which has a fuel tank, which has a free surface. Is it stable? If it's not, how do we fix it? Okay. So let's tr first try to answer the question whether it is stable or not. So to figure out whether it's stable or not, we need to compute the GM. And we know how to do that. So we know KM is equal to KG plus GM. And we know this guy is equal to um, KB plus BM. And we know this guy is equal to I over NABLA. Okay, all of this we have seen before. So um, let's see, we know KB, KB, KB. Are we given KB? No, but you know KB. How much is KB? Okay, what's the value of KB? Think about this, this is a 2.5, uh, this is a rectangular draft, depth is five. Okay, so water line is not up to the top, that's the deck. We're given draft is what, and draft is three meters. 
1.5, right? So 3 by 2, 1.5 plus I over NABLA. Kg is given, it's 4. Okay. NABLA is easy to compute since this is a rectangle. So NABLA is L times B times T. 40 times 10 times 3. 3 is 4, 12, 1, 2, 0, 0. Okay, I is um, um, B, uh, okay, is L, B, Q over 12. Forty times ten cubed divided by twelve. Okay, so you plug all of that in here, and you get um, GM is um, you end up getting it's zero point two seven. Okay, so is there a problem with this or not? With this setup we have right now, is this problematic or is this okay? It's a little small, but I mean, the question says, how many partitions do we need to be stable? So what's your answer? We don't need any partitions. Okay, think about this. What when we compute the GM, we have and we have computed the GM of the barge. Have we considered the free surface? Not yet. How do we consider the free surface effect? So this is um, GM without considering. the free surface effects. What does free surface effect do? This liquid fill tank, oil fill tank that's sloshing around, what will that do? It will what? It will change the GM. Uh, more? Less? Will it eat? Yeah, it, that's what we talked about, right? Uh, the free surface decreases the GM. So 0 0.27 is if there were no sloshing liquid, then we are good. But the sloshing liquid decreases this 0 0.27. By how much? We don't know yet, but we can compute it. So, um, due to the free surface, we have a loss in GM. And we know this we uh, derived last time. This will be equal to rho liquid over rho seawater I tank divided by nabla total. Okay, then we just plug in the values for everything that's known. So rho L. Uh, rho L is uh, what? Um, is the oil density 0 0.9 ton per meter cubed? Rho seawater is 1.025 ton per meter cubed. Oh, 
What should I put for NAMBLA total? No? Okay, guys, stop playing with your computer. Let it run and tell me. Focus here. What is that? Yeah. The, uh, some of the original uh, volume, uh, displaced volume, and the uh, new displaced volume, or? Uh, what do you mean by new displaced volume? Let's look at the sketch here. Mm -hmm. So there's no new displaced volume. Um, the um, oil tank is already on board. So whatever the draft is right now is the com combined draft, right? So we, we take the, the, the draft is three. So we get three times 10 times 40. Makes sense. Okay, and now tell me what is I tank? It'll be what? L B cubed over twelve? With what is L here? For for Okay. So we have fifteen times cubed over twelve. Yeah. So since we consider the plane of the liquid that will slosh. Cubed over 12. Okay. When you do all of this, you will end up with 0 0.9146 meters. So just because there's this uh, freely sloshing liquid surface, you've lost almost a meter in your GM. And if you look at what your original GM was, 0 0.27, we've obviously gone, okay. So GM effective is GM original minus GM loss. So this is 0 0.27 minus 0 0.9146. Negative something. Okay, and this is unstable. So your barge will capsize unless you do something. That something is partitioning, yes. We take this uh, fuel tank and put a partition down the middle. How many do we put? Do we split it into two tanks? Do we split it into three tanks? That's the question, we don't know yet, okay? So since we don't know the number, let's call it N. So if we take N partitions, if we, Partition the tank into uh, B over N. Oh yeah, you can do that. So you can uh, in, you can put that in here, I tank, or you can just use the one over N squared formula. Okay, and and yeah, we will solve for the unknown N. If we partition the tank into N subdivisions, in this case, GM loss would be um, rho L over rho S times I tank 
for nabla times one over n squared. Okay, which is 0 0.9146 over n squared. And we want this loss, so we want GM effective to be greater than zero. Okay, which means um, GM original minus GM effective has to be greater than zero, which means um, 0 0.27 minus 0 0.9146 over n squared has to be greater than zero, which means n has to be greater than 1.84. How many partitions? Two partitions. Is three okay? Yeah, three is okay. Three would be just more stable. So we need at least two to be stable. Uh, without two partitions, uh, without two subdivisions, the boat will capsize. So we need at least two partitions to be stable. Okay. Any questions about that? All right, on my laptop, the snappy hex mesh is still running. We, we are still generating the mesh, so it, it takes a while. All right, so... Um, We've talked a lot about when things, conditions change, how does the meta center change? How does the buoyant center of buoyancy change? So when uh, you are operating a ship, you don't want to go back and compute everything all the time. So the ship's designer will give the operator a bunch of charts where this is already plotted out. And you can just go and look at these charts and uh, figure out your stability. Um, well, I have one question. Are the partitions uh, in, the, in the last problem you just said the partitions are oriented along the beam? Okay. Is that the amount of required partition? So somebody help me answer that question. Is, is the par partition parallel to the beam or the length? Okay. Okay. Yeah. There I see it's parallel uh, along the length. Yeah. So it's always parallel to the length. Okay. Because but it seems like it seems like since you're concerned about the roll, you want the partitions to be along the beam. Is that, is that I mean that's that's just how it seems it would it would help. It didn't seem like it would help the stability if they're along the length. If you partition it along the beam, your free surface, uh, the width remains the same. So the amount of sloshing the it'll move the g uh, where is the g mm. this center of gravity due to sloshing there will be no change if you just partition along the uh, parallel to the beam the the water surface will still look like this the interior liquid surface will still look like this so that's what we are trying to break up. We're trying to break. Okay. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, the partitions are parallel to the length. Correct. Okay. In that drawing, it's in the drawing in the last problem. It seems like they were parallel to the beam. That's what I was I was questioning. Um, it okay. seems like if you were, I guess you're partitioning that red, that red volume, in this half. Internal tank. That's the in tank that holds fuel and it runs the whole length of the beam. That's okay. So, so could you just draw the where the partition would be really quick so I could see? 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so parallel to the length, because we want to break up that surface into two different surfaces. Yeah, I don't know why I thought that that entire thing was the tank. Okay, I, I, that's what I thought the whole time. Thanks. Oh, the, no, no, the outer... Uh, that's the hole. Yeah. The, um, the barge, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> so, mm, yeah, so we came up with at least, we need at least two partitions. Next, um, so as I was saying, if you are on the ship, you don't want to be recomputing integrals all the time. So the ship designer will give you these, uh, metacentric diagrams. Well, in this case, you are the ship designer, so you would give the operator these metacentric diagrams. And what they show is basically on this axis, we have the draft. And on the other axis, so on the vertical axis, we have the draft and on the other axis, um, on the horizontal axis, we might have several things. So in this case, we will look at KB and KM. So the curve might look something like this for KB and like this for KM. So you see, this is very useful because um, if the ship's operator knows they have to load a certain amount of cargo and it'll end up with the draft line at some level, they can immediately go and figure out where the resulting KB is and where the resulting KM is, okay? So you, you don't have to do a lot of computations. KB and KM. Are plotted. The draft. So the diagram just helps us very quickly determine the location of B and M, depending on what our water line is. Okay, so that's what's called metacentric diagrams. Um, another type of diagram you, you might have is uh, um, hydrostatic curves.
let me ask you, is your computer still so showing snappy X mesh? Uh, oh, so, I forgot. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. No, yeah. Anybody managed to finish snappy X mesh? Mine finishes snappy mesh. So next it's running what, uh, Interform? It says it's, yeah, using four processes. Okay, and it's running, run. it says running Interform on blah, blah, blah. Yes. Okay, so for you, the, yeah, my computer is now like seven years old, uh, so it's a bit slow. Um, so uh, yeah, for you, the flow calculations have already started. Everybody else who's on snappy X mesh is still creating the mesh. Okay, so again, let it do its thing and we'll come back to it. Okay, hydrostatic curves. So these diagrams show how the displacement of the hull KM, KB, LCF, and many other things, how they change with the draft. At some point, I'll give you a homework where you can use these static curves to solve your problem. For a range. Parallel to DWL. Okay, and these what? Curves are for specific. Oh yeah, these curves are for a specific hull. Anytime you design a new hull, you have to recompute all of this. Okay, and if you create the same hull shape, like many of them, the same curve applies. So. These curves might look like this. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just marking, I mean, arbitrarily, depending on the hull, this, this will change, obviously. So um, we have, we would, might have KB here. Another line might be, uh, so this might show us. Increase in displacement per unit increase in draft. Okay, so that curve would show us um, increase in displacement, so the weight of the hull. And we might have a KM as before. Then we might have a point which is marked the midships. And we might have LCB from phi, or we might have LCF from phi. Okay, so a very useful way of depicting everything in one place. Okay. Uh, and again, we'll we'll see how to use these in 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 the homework problems. So, up until now, we've been mainly talking about roll, right? Stability in um, roll condition, because that is one of the most problematic um, uh, states. Um, we will now talk about what happens in trimming. And trimming is not necessary, not, well, usually you don't worry about stability when um, trimming or pitching your nose up and down. You might care about uh, having the hull 
be on even keel instead of the nose pointing up or down. So um, again, it, it's probably obvious by now that depending on how you arrange your cargo, your, your nose might end up pointing, in the, pointing to the sky or pointing down into the ocean. Okay. So now we'll learn how to prevent all of that from happening. Are any of you planning to use open foam for your projects? Or not the project here, but your senior design project? You're considering it? When is it due? Yeah, group three will probably use it to simulate our catamaran. Okay, all right. Uh, and when is it due? Last week of April? Yeah. Okay, okay. So um, see, uh, these things are very heavy computationally. So you won't be able to run it on your uh, laptops. If you really need like heavy duty computers, come to me and we have computers here. They're for our research, but um, you know, we, we'll try and set it up for you. Awesome, um, thank you. Yeah, but uh, really get comfortable with the software. You basically have to um, change the few things I told you. And instead of putting the DTC hull, you put your own hull and you just do the simulation. Okay. Um, okay. Parallel to the Zeno. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, now, so when we talk about the nose pitching up or down, we are talking about trim. And for a small changes in trim angle, the hull will uh, rotate about the LCF. Again, the same as before. So for small trim, we'll rotate about the LCF. So trimming, uh, again, if you are the ship designer, you want to give the operator a ship that's on even keel. You don't want your nose pointing to the sky or pointing down. So trimming happens when they start loading on cargo and moving it about. So if, uh, um, if a weight is added to a ship, we get two things that happen. And we're talking about the trim. I mean, we've already seen you can heal if you put too much weight on one side, you're, you'll, you'll start to have a non-zero heel angle. So weight added to a ship, two things will happen. The first is ship uh, sinks further until Buoyant force is equal to delta ship plus delta cargo. Okay. So me basically draft will increase. The second thing is The hull will trim, meaning its uh, pitch angle will change either positive or negative until the new center of buoyancy is lined up vertically. with the new CG 
Makes sense, right? I mean, if the CG and the buoyancy center are out of line, there's a restoring torque. Or, a, yeah, hopefully there's a restoring torque. Uh, if there's a destabilizing torque, then yeah. But that doesn't happen in the longitudinal motion. So uh, the angle will change either positive or negative until the two points line up. Okay. And when we consider these two separate effects together, we, we get a combined effect. So combined effect is uh, weight looks like it is added at the LCF. And this helps us compute the new draft. And there's a change in angle due to moment. Um, so let's draw a sketch and these things will become um, clearer. Let me draw a hull from the side view. Initially, we were at even keel. So this was the original condition. Let's call this water line zero. Okay. And the new condition is, um, okay, let me see. Let me put the LCF somewhere here. That is our current waterline, waterline one. Our LCF is right here. Okay. Um, is this, does this make sense? Even keel, we have the waterline horizontal and then in trimmed condition, the waterline, I mean, the water is not tilted, it's the hull that's tilted. What? Condition is this, my nose pointing to sky or nose pointing to the ocean? To the what? The okay, you say to the ocean. Why? It seems like it's pointing upward. Yeah, the water is still horizontal. It's your hull that's tilted down. Okay, just for drawing the sketch, we keep the hull horizontal. <clears throat> okay, so um, the water then touches the hull here in the aft position. This is our AP, and that is our FP. And if we have If you remember, um, this is our 
Now we don't have a consonant draft. We have two different drafts. We have a T aft and we have a T4. And AP to FP is our L. And you can see this vertical distance is T4 minus TF. And here we we have a very simple tan theta is T4 minus T aft over L. Okay. And this T4 minus T aft we call little t. This is called trim. When you hear the word trim angle, we're talking about theta. When you hear the word trim, we're talking about T4 minus T aft. So keep that in mind. The unit here is length. Okay. And for small angles, of course, theta is closed, uh, approximated by theta. So theta is nearly equal to theta or small angles. Which is equal to T over L. Okay, everything here makes sense? We're good? Yeah, it's um, just the draft, remember that the draft no longer is a constant value. In the four, we have some value. In the aft, we have some other value. And this is just trigonometry. Tan theta is that vertical distance divided by L. Okay. Um, oh, there's a chat. Wait. Oh, I'm badly feeling. Okay. All right. So. Um, Just we'll write down two more things and then we'll stop. So if uh, T aft is greater than T4, we call this uh, trimmed by the stern. And if T aft is less than T4, Okay, so whenever you see trimmed by the bow or trimmed by the stern, you should be able to put a plus or minus sign correctly on the little t. A planing hull? Yeah, a speedboat uh, basically has a planing hull where you have the nose pointing up. Okay, which is it, trimmed by the stern or trimmed by the bow? Okay, is it trimmed by the stern? Yes, it is, okay. <laughs> so T aft, uh, since your nose is pointing up, T4 will be smaller compared to T aft. So your uh, stern is riding lower in the water. So trimmed by the stern. Any other questions? Okay, so let your simulation run. Uh, don't uh, kill it. Um, or if you kill it, run it again later. And next week we'll look at the results and how to visualize it, how to look at the waves, etc.
All right, and I'll grade your midterm this weekend. Uh, Dr. Verbo? Yes. I was wondering if there was a way that you would consider uh, dropping our lowest quiz grade, uh, even if, I don't know, that means us taking one more quiz? Uh, um, you, does everybody want to take two more, uh, an, an extra quiz? Yes. Yeah. Anybody against taking an extra quiz? Okay, um, all right, so I'll give you two quizzes instead of one before the end of the term. Um, okay, so see you Thank guys. You. Yeah, Thank sure. You. See you guys uh, next week. All right, bye. Thank you.